Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Andrea Aime. As I uh, said, I'm a GeoServer Core developer, but I also do contribute to uh, GeoWebCache. And uh, the co writer of this presentation is Kevin Smith, which is the current maintainer of the project. Okay, I work for GeoSolutions. We have offices in Italy and the US. The company is growing. Last time I did this presentation, it, it was saying 30 plus collaborators. Now we are 40 plus. We are uh, supporting a number of open source projects uh, with a core involvement in their development, including uh, GeoServer, MapStore, GeoNode, and GeoNetwork. And we offer a variety of services around them. Uh, GeoSolutions is about openness, so we strongly support open source OS Geo. We are an OGC member because we believe in open standards and uh, uh, also support the standards critical to GeoInt. So let's begin by asking ourselves, what is GeoWebCache anyways? So GeoWebCache is first and foremost a tile server. It's a Java-based standalone tile server that supports a variety of tile protocols like WMTS, TMS, TileJSON, uh, NXYZ, Google Maps, Bing Maps, and so on. But it's also a WMS server. Not maybe many people know that uh, um, GeoCache can be turned into a, a, a WMS. Uh, there is an option, because it's an option away, it's a configuration option away, which is full WMS equals true in uh, its uh, configuration file. And then uh, GeoCache can take tiles that it has in the cache, combine them, uh, scale them, and cut them in order to uh, answer a generic WMS request. Currently, it's working only on a single layer basis, so you, unlike WMS, you cannot uh, list like three layers and say, give me a map of that. Uh, it works only if you are specifying a single layer, but if anyone here or listening uh, from remote is interested in sponsoring uh, multi-layer support, we are uh, very happy to talk with you. Or if you want to simply implement it and make a pull request, that's going to be very well received. Um, GeoWebCache is based on a variety of tile sources, um, uh, such as WMS, MB tiles, and Compact Cache, and more. We are going to talk about each one of them in, uh, in detail. Some of the tile sources are actually not tiles, such as WMS, so we need to actually store the tiles somewhere. And uh, uh, this is stored through an interface with that we call the Blob Store. And we have different options such as file system, cloud storage, SQL databases, and so on. Um, the configuration of a standalone GeoWeb cache is based on an XML file, but it also has a REST API that you can use to uh, add layers, remove layers, control uh, grid sets, uh, configure the disk quota, and so on. So you have an option to uh, write your own XML file or uh, use uh, the REST API to control its configuration at runtime. If you are not much into uh, the programmatic control, then you can also uh, use GeoCache as part of a GeoServer. So GeoCache, as I said, is a standalone software, and uh, it was born that way. But technologically speaking, it was so close to GeoServer using the same programming language, using the same basic libraries, that we actually managed to import it as a library and integrate it with GeoServer so that we can do point and click configuration and a few other interesting tricks that I'm going to explain later. So anytime you download a GeoServer, it actually comes with an embedded GeoCache running inside of it. Okay, so let's start from the top and work our way to the bottom. Tile services. GeoCache was born as a, an implementation of TMS, the tile map service, and uh, eventually it also had the web map service cached uh, uh, protocol implementation. These are the original tile services from OSGeo back from a time when OGC did not have a protocol for tiles yet. WMTS came later. And um, uh, the first implementation of uh, GeoWebCache was a TMS built on top of WMS layers. So it was meant to cache and tile cache uh, layers and deliver them as TMS. Um, of course, we do support WMTS, WebMap Tile Service, which is the OGC standard. Uh, 
The OGC standard comes in a couple of flavors. One is KVP, where you have these URLs with key value pairs in, in, uh, in the query string that identify the layer, the X, Y, and Z, the, the grid set, and so on. And uh, this is kind of the uh, first implementation that we made for WMTS. But then we also implemented RESTful uh, interfaces, which has a slightly different approach, and uh, every parameter is actually baked into the path of the URL, and it doesn't have a query string instead. Um, the capabilities document, unlike uh, the other standards, uh, has explicit support for dimensions such as time and elevation or other custom dimensions so that uh, your clients can discover which values are available for time and elevation and other custom dimensions. Along with support for uh, WMTS, we have support for the 2D tile matrix set specification from OGC. That specification, among the other things, lists a bunch of well-known tile matrix sets, that is, definition of tile pyramids, uh, that have a, a, a name and a, um, a well-known uh, way of being organized. So we have names like Web Mercator Quad, Word CRS84 Quad, UTM, uh, some zone WGS84 Quad, and uh, since we have the UTMs and also the UPSs, uh, uh, that go with it to cover the entire planet, uh, we end up having a lot, a lot of built-in CRSs that you can choose, sorry, not CRSs, time matrix acts, that you can choose by just point and clicking without have to configure stuff. If you're looking for your classic web mercator that all, all uh, XYZ uh, clients are respecting, go to web mercator quad. If you want to make me happy, choose anything else, like literally anything else. Um, in uh, OGC 2D time matrix set, the, the Z uh, parameter is a pure number. It's kind of an improvement compared to the o older time matrix sets. So in a classic OGC, uh, sorry, not OGC, in classic Geo, uh, web cache, uh, the, the tile matrix set and the tile matrix is identified by uh, a long string and many um, XYZ clients do not like to have a, a complex string as the Z, they only want a number. So in the definition of these tile matrix sets, the Z is always a number, which helps with interoperability with XYZ clients. Instead of having, you know, EPSG column 3857 column 0 instead of just 0. In WMTS, we have built in recent years a tile JSON integration. So when you go to the capabilities document of a RESTful WMTS, it has a number of resources which are literally links. Uh, sometimes they are templates where you have to fill in an X, Y, and a Z, and other times they are just plain links. One of them in the capabilities document of GeoServer is uh, a compliant tile JSON document. Tile JSON is interesting because it plays into the Mapbox uh, uh, ecosystem, let's say and uh, you can uh, point your uh, Mapbox client to the tile JSON, and the tile JSON describes templates for the tiles, the area covered by the tile set. Uh, if you are playing with vector tiles, it describes which attributes are found into the vector tiles and so on, so that uh, the, the client can have uh, full information about how to access the tiles. Uh, as I said, typically OGC clients don't care, but if you are playing into a Mapbox client, then this is useful. And then there is OGC API tiles. Uh, WMTS is going to eventually be replaced by this uh, uh, standard, which is current in a draft form, so it's not finalized. It's still subject to changes, but it's a, a, a nice modern uh, protocol based on RESTful idea, open API descriptions, uh, JSON uh, representation of every resource, plus optional HTML representation of every resource. You can have OGC API tiles only if you are using the GeoServer integrated version of GeoWeb Cache because it, it has been implemented on top of the GeoServer framework for OGC APIs, so it's not part of the standalone GeoWeb Cache, but you, you can have it if you are using the integrated ones. And it supports both so-called map tiles, that is images, PNG, JPEGs, and whatever, but also uh, data tiles, which in the case of GeoServer means uh, Mapbox vector tiles. Although uh, 
with a, a little bit more implementation effort, you could have also raster data tiles, like uh, tiny GeoTIFFs, which then you could use in clients. Um, there are other services implemented in uh, GeoCache, like the Google Maps compatible tiles, the Bing Maps compatible tiles, and KML tiles. They were pretty popular once upon a time. Now, uh, I don't see them used uh, a lot. Um, but uh, I think that the interesting uh, message about uh, all of this is that we have a number of service implementations, and the GeoCache architecture is modular, so you can come in and implement whatever other uh, tile-based protocol you you see fit. Then let's move to the sources of tiles, the tile layers. The first tile layer was the WMS tile layer. It uh, connects to a WMS server and generates tiles by making get maps to the uh, WMS server. Eventually, based on configuration, it might ask for a meta tile that is a group of and, uh, sorry, X by Y tiles that is again then uh, uh, downloaded and sliced into actual tiles. Uh, meta tiling is interesting because it reduces uh, communication overhead and because uh, it typically improves labeling layout. Um, on top of that, uh, we have a number of uh, options such as uh, filter parameters. So when you go to a WMS server like GeoServer, you have a bunch of options attached to a particular layer, such as uh, default style, but also alternate styles. And you might want to tile cache all of them, and not just the default one. And GeoCache will generate uh, parallel tile caches for each and every style. Or you could have uh, tile caches based on time, on elevation, or SQL filter, or environment variables, and whatever other vendor parameter you, you can think of. Uh, you go to GeoCache, you describe your vendor parameter, you describe the domain of that parameter that you want to cache. Like, for example, you, you might want to only cache a range of time, or, uh, um, I don't know, three possible values for an environment variables and not every random string uh, that one could possibly input, and then uh, GeoCache is gonna generate caches uh, for each and every combination of parameters. Um, of course, you uh, configure the, the set of supported time matrix sets for each, uh, um, for each uh, layer you might be caching in Web Mercator, but also in WGS84, but also in uh, some Lambert uh, which is suitable for your area, and so on and so on. Since we are fetching from a WMS, which is not uh, a natural tile source, we have to actually generate tiles and put them somewhere. So this layer has to put tiles in a blob store. It has to put them somewhere. And we are going to talk about possible implementations of blob stores later. Um, the ArcGIS Compact Cache is an open specification by Esri that uh, allows to stick uh, many tiles into uh, a small set of files or uh, a small uh, directory tree. And uh, um, this has been contributed by external developers. So in the compact cache, you go to your ArcGIS, you export your compact cache, it's fully seeded, um, uh, it has all the possible tiles, you attach it to GeoWeb cache and it's gonna start serving tiles. So in this case, we don't really need a blob store, all the tiles are, are already there. Uh, we just need to figure out which tile matches the request and fetch it. This module has been contributed by an external developer and hasn't been maintained much. So if you know anyone that can step, can step up as the maintainer of this module, or if you know anyone that would fund uh, other developers to uh, get a better sense of how this module works and become a maintainer, please let, let us know. Um, another um, tile source is the MB tiles layer. MB tiles are single file tile caches based on SQLite. So it's a little database with, uh, I don't remember, uh, it has one table for the tiles, one table for the metadata, stuff like that. And uh, so basically all the tiles are stuck into this uh, little SQLite database. And again, they are typically fully seeded. So you attach this, uh, this uh, SQLite file to GeoCache and it's just gonna query the right tile based on the request. Again, no need for a blob store, all the tiles are already there. Um, under covers, and something that uh, people often do not know about, is the GeoServer tile layer. It's uh, the, the bridge between uh, the tile layers in, in, 
uh, in, sorry, the layers in GeoServer and the tile caching machinery of GeoCache. It's a custom implementation that makes use of uh, a few things like direct uh, rendering engine integration. Okay, tile layer is interface. You don't see what you like, you can implement your own tile layer. Blob stores, uh, it's where we store tiles for WMS layers typically. You can store on the file system with a configurable layout. Uh, we have a native uh, layout which is uh, sometimes uh, a bit strange, but it ensures that we never have too many files in a directory, which on some file system can be an important feature. Or we can go X, Y, Z um, and uh, uh, then generate a native, uh, a native cache that you, you can maybe export. Uh, there is a number of uh, blob storage integrations, such as S3, but also Azure, but also, uh, oopsie. Um, let me go back. But also Swift. So generally speaking, we take um, uh, blob storages and store, uh, store ties in buckets, or whatever they are called in the, the specific platform. And uh, for example, we, we don't have uh, right now one for uh, uh, Google storage. It would be nice if someone came and, and implemented it. Uh, blob store, uh, the SQLite blob store is another uh, idea that we can use multiple SQLite files. So it plays a little bit on MB tiles, but it uses multiple SQL, separate SQLite files so that we can seed uh, with uh, greater efficiency tiles because we can parallelize the computation. Otherwise, all the inserts would accumulate on the single uh, SQLite file and slow down stuff. Okay, Blob Store is an interface, so you can go and implement your own. So Google Storage, Memcached are just a few ideas of what could be done. Um, also, when we are using a, um, a Blob Store, we, use, uh, we can use this quota to limit the number of tiles of the store on disk in case we are doing dynamic caching. So you say, okay, my disk, I have 200 gigabytes that I will dedicate it to tile caching, no more. And uh, when I reach the limit, uh, it's gonna clean up uh, less used tiles. Uh, GeoCache uh, is well integrated uh, with GeoServer with point and click configuration in every layer. You can configure the grid set with point and click. You can uh, do fancy stuff like the direct integration. The direct integration is that idea if, uh, if a WMS request comes in, uh, GeoCache will try to evaluate and see if it actually match matches a cache tile. And if it does, it's gonna uh, just use the cache tile directly. Otherwise, if it's cacheable, it's gonna cache it. If it's not cacheable because of some request parameters that are outside of the definition of the caching, then it's gonna do a dynamic request. So it allows you to dynamically switch between uh, caching and non-caching modes uh, based on uh, your current request. Um, we have uh, also automatic cleanups, so when uh, when we, you edit a style or you do WFST on data, uh, GeoServer will know which tiles to drop and it's gonna do aut automatically clean your cache. There's a REST interface, as I said, for full configuration of all the layers, the blob stores, the tile matrix, the disk quota, uh, and also a REST API for seeding and cleaning, so creating tiles as a, a must job or cleaning tiles as a must job. And you can programmatically control this. In terms of community, please get in touch with us. Uh, you can uh, download the packages from uh, uh, GitHub, from uh, SourceForge, and uh, uh, there's a link to the documentation. Uh, in terms of communication, we have a user and a developer mailing list where you can drop and ask questions or ask uh, about uh, your potential participation to the project. And uh, in terms of development, uh, well, throw us a, a pull request. Um, for new features, bug fixes, or maintenance, documentation, please, documentation, it's uh, always uh, less loved. And uh, uh, also testing, when we are about to release, please try out our release candidate and let's, uh, let us know if you find any issue. And with this, I'm done. Thanks, Andrea, that's a very powerful software. Um, the, if you can ask questions on Venulus, um, we have a record of them. So um, there's one question on, online so far, and then we can, we can throw it out to the floor. So um, it's a two-part question, Andrea. Um, is it better to have separate geo web cache that can scale beside a geo server instead of using the embedded one when working with clustered infrastructure? 
And how easy is it to bind this kind of geo web cache with geo server to have a fully scalable architecture? Okay, so it depends. Uh, it depends on uh, where you want to go, how much you want to scale, and how many tiles you want to, to build. So if your objective is to, so let's say that you have a large installation with many nodes and you have a, a geo uh, web cache, in that case in front, and you want to do a large seed job, then uh, that single geo web cache can uh, literally hit the entire cluster and uh, multiply the, the, the speed at which the, uh, the seeding happens by leveraging the, the full cluster. So it's definitely, definitely going to, to speed up intensive seed jobs a lot. On the other end, since it's external, we will have to uh, make a map, compress it to PNG, and then decode the PNG on the other side. So on the single request, it's actually going to pay some extra time rather than with the integrated one, render them up, and save it as a, as a tile directly. So there's this kind of trade-off. If you are going towards uh, uh, Preceding a lot and you want to, to have a maximum performance, then yes, having a geo cache in front separate is better from a uh, performance and scalability point of view. If instead you are going to do a lot of uh, um, on-demand tile caching where the tile cache starts empty and then as the request comes in, we generate the, the tiles on the fly, uh, then the, the traffic is typically going to be lower and it pays off to not have to compress PNG and decompress PNG over the wire. So it, I would prefer a um, embedded uh, situation instead. Um, in terms of configuration, the embedded one configures itself as you add layers by default. So it's really, really easy. Um, maybe sometimes too easy, like uh, you end up with so many tile cached layers that you don't even realize. Um, uh, the, the standalone one needs you to write the XML uh, configuration for the, the tile layers, for every tile layer that you want to, uh, to control. Uh, and you can use the REST API to automate that. So it's feasible, but it's going to be more work, definitely. OK, great, thank you. Uh, a second question has come in. Um, if the, I presume it's the OGC tiles API will be in GeoServer, what role will GeoWebCache have in the future? Well, it depends. Uh, we could go and implement uh, the, the tiles API also in, uh, in GeoWebCache, maybe in a lighter way, maybe like, uh, for example, only with the JSON bindings and forget about the uh, other, other bits like HTML representation of resources um, because they are not mandatory. And uh, implementing just JSON is like pretty, pretty quick. Uh, so that would be a, a way. Um, another thing that um, I'm thinking about is that we could also flip it and say, OK, let's, let's say that we are always going to use the integrated one. But we come up with a clustering solution that if we start a seed job on one node, spreads out the, the calculation on, on all of the others that are in the same cluster. That's also feasible and would, would retain the point-and-click support and uh, all the fancy extra abilities that GeoServer has. Okay, great, thank you. Um, are there any questions from the room?